Hey gang, what's going on? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thanks for checking out today's video. Much appreciated. Today we're going to be talking about my two favorite ways to catch bass in the month of June. And the good thing about that, there's a shallow technique I'm going to talk about and there's a deeper water technique I'm going to talk about. Both are super effective. So before we get into that, I want to remind you pertinent to June fishing and summer fishing. If you guys are interested in checking out our, our uh, Fish the Moment Lake Map breakdowns, we got our summer breakdowns for the June, July, and August month. Um, I'll put the Fish the Moment uh, Lake Map breakdown link in the description. Gives you guys 40 good GPS waypoints to begin your search at. And if the lake that you fish is not on our website, um, you can book a virtual lesson with me and we can go over any lake you want to fish. I don't care how big or small it is. Uh, on Google Earth and Navionics and get you guys all lined up for that. So link in the description here, guys. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, June. Um, June is one of my favorite months to fish because there's a lot of different things going on. It's a big transition month. The fish really, really do a noticeable uh, 180 from what they've done in the, in the previous two months. And there's two different uh, ways I like to catch them because there's really two different populations of fish that you can catch in the month of June. First of all, we're going to talk about the shallow, then we'll talk about the deep. June is a really good month to fish shallow because um, there's a heavy bluegill spawn in the month of June. In fact, I think it's probably the, I think the, the biggest majority of bluegill spawn in June. They'll spawn all summer, but they really spawn heavily in June. And um, they, it's almost like as soon as the bass move out of their spawning areas, like the back of coves and that stuff, the bluegill move right in there and a lot of bass stay in those areas um, as long as those bluegill are spawning. I, the, the last couple of trips that I've taken down to Tabrock and Stockton Lake, bluegill are bedding everywhere. I've been seeing bass up in a foot and a half, two foot of water and it's a really good way to catch them. And there's two different ways I like to catch them. If the water visibility is over three feet, you can't beat a top water or like a zoom super fluke. I'll take a some type of walking top water like that bank of bass die monte um, fish it, you know, basically right around those bluegill beds, make long casts, fish it through the areas I think the bluegill are bedding. Sometimes I'll take a wacky rig that works really good and the Zoom Super Fluke. Those are, those are my three things if that water visibility is over three feet. If the visibility is under three feet, specifically if it's in that one to two foot zone, a lot of times you're not going to be able to see those beds and it's hard to beat a swim jig. Swim jig is a great way to catch them. Uh, when they're bedding, or excuse me, when those fish are uh, chasing those bluegill and eating those bluegill bedders. And uh, the color swim jig just really depends on, you know, the water visibility. But my favorite is probably like a green pumpkin with maybe some chartreuse and orange with it, with a green pumpkin trailer. And just trying to keep it in sight, keeping it just under the surface of the water, just covering about the back two thirds of those coves. Now the deep way you can catch them guys, there's probably not a better month of the year to catch them deep cranking than the month of June. June is when I, I used to, back when, a lot of guys don't know this, but I was like, I was fishing deep back before anyone else was fishing deep or when guys like David Fritz, I got onto it early on back in the eighties uh, on Grand Lake. And for about a, probably about an eight year period, I had pretty much had it by myself deep cranking those drop-offs and ledges um, which nobody really did back then because you didn't have any GPS all we had was topographical maps and the flasher but ever since then guys I've caught some of my biggest bags of fish deep cranking in June now one of the good things about deep cranking in June is you don't have to really have live scope for it you, these fish in June what they usually do on I don't care if it's TV TVA Lake or whatever is they like to get on hard structure breaks so you can get out on the ledges, you can get out on main lake points that have drop-offs and take you a big crankbait like that Mega Bass Deep Six or DD22 or Strike King XD, 6XD, something like that. And just put your boat in anywhere between 10 to 20 foot of water, depending upon the depth and the clarity you're fishing, and just fan cast in and around those point ends and sides. There's a lot of quality fish that school up on those point ends and sides particularly in the first two or three weeks of June. Now, once you start getting towards the end of June and into July, those fish disperse a little bit more, they start suspending more, and it's not as good. But guys, man, I can't tell you how many four to six pound bass that I've caught uh, between like the last week of May and the last week of June, deep cranking those points. It's a really good way to catch them. So 
anyway guys that is my two favorite ways to catch them looking for those shallow bluegill feeders or deep cranking out there um it's just a, it's just a really good way to catch quality fish and like i said june can be tough it's not like it's easy it's not it's not as easy as april and may to catch fish but it's a time of year that you can really catch some quality fish before things get tougher because it will get tougher in june july and september get or excuse me in august in july august and september it'll start getting tough but june is still pretty good month so anyway guys thanks for tuning in we'll talk later